Okay, good morning everyone. Good morning. Yeah. Um, many of you know what is difference between environment and ecology? Environment is the one whatever surrounds us, hmm. how we are interacting, how that in, in turn interact on you yeah. is about the environment. Ah. Ecology is the one what we study about the ecosystem, what exists there, yeah. what is happening there. Yeah. And what is ecosystem? Interaction. Interaction of biotic and abiotic. So environment is, is uh, related to nature, right? Functional component of the ecosystem. Uh, eco what, what about this? This is environment like office environment, conference environment. So environment can be anything our surrounding. And ecosystem also can be industrial ecosystem, office ecosystem. Okay. But here we are going to discuss more about natural ecosystem. So yesterday, Dr. Nikhil told about Gaia's theory. Anybody remembers what is Gaia's theory? Can anyone say? Gaia's theory, he told that earth behaves at, as if it has purpose to support life. The conditions on earth are uh, designed in a such a way that as if it is nurturing life. Okay, You know on any other planet there is no life. Okay, why there is a life on earth? Because of suitable conditions like air, water, air, water temperature, 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 CO2, greenhouse gases also play a very important role. What will happen if there are no greenhouse gases on the earth? Ice. ice. So there will be no life, right? There is no right. Oxygen. Yeah. So all these are basic things. So I, I don't think that I need to explain all these things to you how lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere and biosphere is interlinked with each other, we all know. Biosphere forms all together, lithosphere, what is lithosphere? Bios yeah, hydrosphere, water, water. atmosphere, yeah. Yeah. all the three together and living beings together is biosphere. Yeah. So what is environment surrounding natural or man-made ecosystems? Biotic and abiotic factors and their interaction. What is biotic? Living, living things. things. Abiotic? Non-living things. The study of the interaction between organisms and their environment and also among organisms. Okay. This is a very interesting study. This is derived from a Greek word. Yeah, yeah. You know that, so I am just skipping. Yeah. And you know different types of ecosystem? Why there are different types of ecosystem? Activities are different. different main, not activities, but it is mainly because of Personal different activity. geographical features like topography, altitude, hills, mountain, whether it is on plains, it is river or lake or it is nearby, coast or whether temperature, salinity, rainfall, yeah, different kinds of rainfall. So abiotic components create specific condition that support a specific community of plants or animals which is adapted to that particular condition. That is why we have got different ecosystems, different abiotic condition which support life, which is adapted to that particular condition. So this is a very incredible learning experience. It shows how everything is one, oneness of nature. Yeah even including human being, how everything is linked with each other, how everything is one, one universe. Uh, is anything to do with, uh, tiger has to do with grass? Tiger eats grass? No. no. Then? Indirectly it controls the grass. Huh? Yeah, because of food chain, you know about food chain. How DDT spread on a lake can endanger local bird population, any idea? Huh? Yeah, but how exactly? Can you tell me? Yeah, uh, one by one, yeah. DDT? Okay. But how it will endanger the uh, local bird population? Very good, sir. What's your name? Jawahar. Can you please explain it loudly? It was found out that uh, it was basically affecting the thickness of the eggshell and yeah. uh, premature uh, breaking of the eggshells were happening. So the, basically embryo was dying. 
thereby reducing the population of birds right right because ddt was not directly causing death of birds but what was happening egg shell were becoming thinner thinner and thinner and embryo was affecting that is why slowly that bird population was getting endangered you understand what is endangered rare extinct yeah so ecology is such a interesting study we can understand that if there is a disturbance in single component of the chain the entire chain gets disturbed uh, have you heard about dodo story in mauritius yeah okay so i will not repeat it uh, okay i'll just tell you that calvarius major was a, a dominant plant in mauritius and suddenly because of some reason dodo bird population uh, was reducing and finally it got extinct but after that even this plant became rare can you explain why it became rare how it was interlinked with uh, dodo somebody told they know somebody know yeah uh, usually birds are known for dispersion of seeds right germination of the seed was basically after passing through the uh, it was perfect after passing through the the gut of the dodo bird so it was not happening yeah. uh, because uh, entire dodo population was eaten up by the portuguese yeah. so it resulted in the final uh, extinction of two species yeah. dodo as well as calvarius major yeah could you understand what he said anybody else yeah no anybody from here what he said can you repeat you understood yeah yeah germination of the seed required that it has to be passed through the gut of the bird right. and that was not happening that uh, passing through the gut made the seed more viable for germination yeah that See, was that important that seed was having very thick coating okay so when dodo used to eat that seed and when it used to go in its gut that because of that enzymes that seed used to get broken and that used to facilitate germination process see all these things we can't even think so i just wanted to tell you that how everything is interlinked how everything is related to each other and if you think if you do any slight disturbance to any one component of that ecosystem entire ecosystem gets affected this is all simple things you know uh, you can tell your students especially engineering students to draw food chain in different ecosystems this is very simple but if you go to different ecosystem level and try to understand food chain then it becomes little interesting and more complicated our uh, amruta e learning lab has developed uh, some small animations i just wanted to share with you so this kind of things you can use to make it more interesting see this is like just for your understanding and to make it more interesting i thought instead of just telling the normal that grass and then uh, deer and tiger i wanted to show that how complex food chain can be in different kinds of ecosystems right you can see this topic is such a topic that uh, really it cannot be taught in classroom okay you have to identify ecosystems uh, nearby your areas you have to take them there and also you can give them assignments to study food chain in ecosystem nearby your area okay see this i already explained that different ecosystems have got different food chain so you can also give them assignment to do uh, like if you are nearby like or you can also give them assignment please uh, draw food chain in different ecosystems so they also know different components in different ecosystem they also know uh, types of ecosystem uh, usually Excuse what me. we used to do yeah on what basis the key species are identified like tiger or elephant i mean the entire food web you have shown some of suppose the suppose if you think that if you if tiger population is disappearing if it is going to affect the entire ecosystem because if tiger is not there uh, deer's population will not be there and then grass will increase so based on the dominant species and important species these species are identified and dominant species ha uh -huh. dominant and critical like critical for that ecosystem no but that how to identify which one is critical i mean there are number of species are there like tiger hyena jackal okay, uh, yeah. so 
I mean, if tiger is not there, then deer population get affected. Would be more, yeah. okay. Yeah. But that will be after the tiger population is not there. But yeah. when the tiger so dominant is there, species will determine the factor, right? I mean, that was. If I, there are very few hyenas, even if they go, tigers are there. But that is after uh, the. Re, I mean, the result is announced. Then we come to know that if hyena is not there, I mean, there is the population is not get affected. But when everything is there, and we have to identify which one is the key species. That's what I am telling you. Suppose there are three hyenas. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there are 50 tigers hmm? and two leopards. If three hyenas have disappeared, it may not have that much impact. If two leopards have disappeared, also will not have that much impact on the ecosystem because tiger will take care. But suppose if 50 tigers have disappeared, definitely there will be some impact. So that is based on numbers? I mean, the, yeah, because domino, it's a there are different factors, there is not only one factor. Or based on the how much they are consuming. For example, tiger is uh, eat, I mean, killing five deer per day, for example, and then hyena only two, or that is all, all yeah. only number. Uh, just to add on that, uh, the food chain that is built, uh, uh, that we identify as a pyramid is, yeah. and we are talking about the interrelationship between yeah, the species. Yeah, yeah. They are existing in, at each trophic level. Each one is present depending on how much energy it can derive from the lower level. So, if any species, uh, even at the top level, disappears, that means they, it is going to create an uh, imbalance in the next level, that is below it. That next level is going to have an, its effect on the next level. So, that way it is going to have a problem. Yeah, that energy level as well as the cycling of the nutrients. So, everything is interdependent. So, that is how, because if, if you take tiger, the disappearance of tiger is going to have an effect on the grass itself. So, right, if right, you, right. that you have to link downwards right in simple i would say just one word keystone species defines the characteristics of the ecosystem that's based what on he's that. telling based How on you that define? only you identify keystone species right 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 so that's what i told there are different factors yeah. as far as i know keystone species is a species whose role cannot be played by any other organism in that ecosystem right 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 that role cannot be correct. played by any other organism correct so it is as complex as this ecosystem and ecology, right? Yesterday I already explained when I was talking about oneness of nature, the species, one species, which species I mentioned? Homo sapiens, humans, okay, human being, what they think? Since they have got slightly extra developed brain, they think that everything is for me and for my development for my pleasure and they start dominating the entire ecosystem. But what is the right thing? Right thing is we are also very much part of or component of ecosystem. I have already uh, explained to everything that how nature is great and uh, how supreme and how we are just a part of nature. So these are the simple things. Uh, but for engineering students or just to revise, you may give this idea that what is organism, that is the individual, species is sim group of similar or organism, species, any doubt in this, species population, population is one particular population in city, crows in city, communities, different types of population in one park or in forest. What is difference between population and community? Species, organism and species you understand. I am organism, this is species, yeah. What is difference between community and population? Population of one species, communities is populations of different, right. Community ecosystem, interaction of various communities among themselves and with environment. So you can give this activity just to make it more clear. We all have already studied this, how producers produce food and then how it is transferred, uh, energy transfers from herbios, carnios, omnios and decomposers. I, here I just want to stress one point, just imagine that there are no decomposers in this ecosystem. What will happen? Dumping about all the waste will take place. Yeah. 
existence. Yeah. That's the happening. It's going to be. No recirculation of nutrients. NPK nutrients. The cycle will not get completed. That's yeah. Energy will get stored in consumer. Yeah. So finally, what will happen? Waste will not happen. These are the cleaners of the environment, decomposers. Yeah, no, I am asking that if hey. there are no decomposers, what will happen? Madam, the uh, entire earth will become a dumping yard. Okay, only that will happen? Entire earth will become dumping ground? No, it remain as it is for a long time. No production at all. No production. So what will happen? Very good. Give him a big hand. What's your name? Prabhanshu? So a bit for indoor, there will not be any life because it will be a waste dump and most important thing, what will stop? It, it stops Nutrient the... Nutrient cycling will stop, that it will not go back to the soil. Soil will not be productive, right? There will not be nutrients. You were also right, but he went one step ahead. Life yeah. cannot be Yeah. <laughs> okay, as you said. Uh, predation also is important, already we studied, because tiger every year it needs 3000 kg of deer. Any community or any uh, forest status is determined by its prey base. How much prey is available for predator? If prey base is low, that forest is considered as not a healthy forest, that is an indicator of forest. There are different kinds of relations in community, competition. Competition for limited resources, yeah. Then competition is within spaces and between spaces. Allelopathy, have you heard of this? Plants release certain kinds of chemicals to avoid other plants' existence nearby them. Okay, that is called allelopathy. Also, some corals they release some kind of toxins to inhibit growth of other coral. Symbiosis, everybody knows. Symbiosis, these three concepts you know, mutualism, commensalism, parasitism. These things are also happening among our human beings. Yeah, sometimes. What is mutualism? Both benefit. I am just joking. Yeah, here one benefits and one is not suffering but not getting benefited. Here, one other one is benefiting, getting benefited and other is suffering. Yeah? These concepts are clear, right? What is ecological niche? Any idea about what is ecological niche? Yeah? Any physical space which is occupied by an organism. Right. Each and every one of us, we are having our own uh, habit, no? So yeah. my, myself, I, I can decide some of the food habits and all. And yourself, you are having the different yeah. food habits. Yeah. So each one of us, we are having our own niche. That is, yeah, each yeah. and every organism, it's a, it has its it own like, niche. It is not only habitat, it is an no. entire thing. It is a very uh, like a diverse thing. Uh, it is niches, your habitat, how much area you require to uh, get food, your food. And uh, for feeding, breeding, for animals, I'm talking niches, their habitat. It's a basic or, yeah. functional unit. Unit, yes, right. Unit. And th there is a something called niche bread. The Some animals, they have got specialized niche. They can only survive in some particular habitat. But some... Endemic. No, no, endemic is different. Endemic is that particular region they are available. But in that region, there can be different ecosystems. Here I am telling, suppose flamingo or any mudskipper, it is found only in mangroves. Nilgiri yeah, Nilgiri Thar is found in only Sholas, Sholas. So it is adapted to that particular habitat. So its niche is very small, its niche breadth is small. Murskipa's niche is only mangrove forest and that uh, Nilgiri Thar's niche is only Shola forest. But if you see elephant, it is found in many other areas. So its niche breadth is broad. Even tiger is found in uh, many areas. Any idea about what is ecological succession? Yeah? Development of new ecosystem. The development of gradual process of change in the composition of function of communities. I have got a very beautiful animation on this, but uh, if time permits, I will show that how uh, the community changes from barren land to grassland to forest ecosystem and when it is a complex forest. At the same time, how 
pond ecosystem like from pond how it becomes uh, like a marshy land and then terrestrial land and complex forest. What is the uh, ultimate uh, this thing of uh, uh, community? Climax community and it is more diverse and more resilient against disturbance. Why? It is adapted to local climate over a period of time and at the same time it is more diverse. What is connection or relation between diversity and stability or resilience? What is connection? Yeah, but why? The control on one or the other species, there is a control. Huh, anybody? Sustainability is why there is, uh, suppose if there is a monoculture plantation of eucalyptus or teak and there is a diverse forest, we say that diverse forest is more stable, complex forest where there are diverse varieties of plants and uh, animals and everything is more stable. Why? Commercialization. Commercialization, even forest they can cut all the plants. Very good. Give him a big hand. What's your name? Varun Shankar. See, if there is a sudden change in climate, all species may not be able to survive. So, at least one species can survive. Suppose if there is a sudden pest attack, what will happen? Hybelia purea comes. Entire tick population will go. Eucalyptus uh, population can affect. But if there are different varieties, like there is a terminalia, there is a mango, there is a sesism, there is Lagostromia, what will happen? If mango goes, Sagigium will survive. Yeah? Teak plantation, teak will survive. Some, not plantation, teak plant will survive. Yeah? So, as I told that uh, you can ask your student to observe change in their nearby locality, how like wetland or any pond previously, uh, what was there, how it is, you know, getting converted. But it cannot happen within 8 days or 1 month. Yeah? It takes time. Okay, nutrient cycling, you all are aware about this, yeah, carbon, oxygen cycling, phosphorus, you can give them assignment, how energy is transferred from one tropic level to another tropic level, huh? from uh, producer, producer is plants, yeah, herbivore, carnivore and then top predator. Biomagnification also we have got small animation, would you like to see or shall we, you know this concept, you want to see? Uh, you know types of ecosystem, what all types of ecosystem you are aware of? Uh, loudly. Natural and man-made, other than that? Types of ecosystem, terrestrial, aquatic, freshwater, marine water, lotic, lentic, yeah. Permanent, in terrestrial forest again we have, evergreen forest, sholas, grasslands, Moist deciduous forest, dry deciduous forest, yeah, alpine forest, then aquatic you already told, river, lake, brackish water, which is the largest brackish water lake in India? Chilka, Chilika, very good. Uh, you said, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, marine, uh, in coastal ecosystem, most important ecosystems in coastal you forgot, mangrove, yeah, and coral reefs. Okay, as I said that, uh, it is like ecosystem, uh, it is really, really, really difficult to explain uh, in classroom, yeah. You have to take your students uh, outside, nearby your ecosystem, like it can be anything, it can be forest, it can be pond, lake, river, even agriculture ecosystem, anywhere you just take them out, show them, describe about uh, how, how beautiful it is. One can appreciate the magnificence of a mountain, the power of the sea, the beauty of a forest and the vast expanses of the desert. And these facilities not only provide a pleasurable experience, but are intended to create a deep respect and love for nature. Yeah? They are also key tool in educating people about the fragility of the environment and the need for sustainable lifestyle. So, unless you take them out and just give them real experience that how beautiful they are, how magnificent they are, how amazing they are, how you feel, peace of mind, you know. Uh, we, we take them to different 
uh, like Silent Valley is nearby us, so I had taken them to Silent Valley National Park and they really enjoyed. Then uh, we tell them to just see, keep quiet and uh, sit in silence and do deep breathing. Understand what, what is mean by fresh air. When they see that Kunti river flowing and pristine water and that tall forest and chirping birds, they really understand that how, how beautiful it is. It is really, really, really difficult to explain in classroom. How many of you take them out? Okay, so will you promise me that all of you will make some effort to take them out at least once in a whole semester? How many will do that? You know when I had taken, I had taken during holidays. So if you miss classes, college will not, if you are really an environmental teacher and if you have passion, you can find out some time from your personal because that is going to be an enjoyable experience to you also. You can take your family along with you. If your wife or husband is telling why are you going on Saturday or Sunday, you can take them also, you can take your children. But then this topic especially, environment topic itself, what is environment? You cannot teach them in classroom. In fact, we have to take many times. Even if I yesterday I told waste dump whatever industrial processes are happening, how they are impacting our water. They should go and measure, you know, water pollution, air pollution. They should actually learn from nature and what is happening around us. Huh? Trekking, trekking, yeah, trekking, see, and whenever you are taking them to forest, you, you can explain very nicely that what is grassland, okay, what is water body, what is forest, and how, what is this, like, you know, structure of forest, how from ground to canopy, different kinds of you know herbs shrubs layers canopy layers then from uh, if you take them to lake or periphery uh, uh, pond you can explain from from periphery to center what is the difference of vegetation weeds animals birds how many of you do bird watching yeah ma'am may i make a suggestion if yeah. they can contact some ngo in there ah region. great great i i forgot very very uh, thanks for that suggestion uh, see every area there will be some active NGOs. Now Maharashtra, there is a BNH, especially in Mumbai. Then there is a Center for Environment Education. How many are, uh, you are from Pune? Okay, Pune, there is a CE. Okay, how many uh, of you are from Mumbai? Mumbai, nobody. Mumbai, uh, this thing is there, BNHS is there. Okay, you can contact them. You don't have to do anything. There is a Center for Environment uh, Education, no, not Center for Environment, something is there. It is there in Goregao, Film City. Okay, you just have to write to them. They will take care of everything. They will explain everything. The Department of Forest, is right Department of Forest uh, uh, in Sanjay Gandhi National Park, they have their own nature uh, conservation center. Yeah. I, I think, um, you know, the point is that some of us are, uh, maybe we are good at our subject, but we are not very good on, on the field. Uh, it is not very easy to be good at the field. So uh, these NGOs, they have specialists, they have people who are trained, uh, who actually right. can read the forest just as beautifully as you can read the right. book. So we cannot develop co competence in that so easily. We can go along with them. Our students will really benefit and we will also benefit. Right, right. And uh, in fact, I had suggested organizers to conduct nature trail to uh, like, you know, Sanjay Gandhi National Park or around uh, IIT campus, but because of time constraint, because see, yesterday also you gave me feedback that uh, I, I could not complete solutions and all, but try to understand 10 days module we are completing in 5 days, okay. Plus like I can't cover a, a, an entire syllabus we teach in 45 hours, right, minimum 45 hours we take and we are all everything trying to cover in, uh, yeah, so yeah. Actually, uh, it is better to have the coordination with the NGOs or the forest department or the local guys. Right. It will be helpful to get into the entire right, right. forest area and also... It is Easy also to get permissions. Avoid the from the animals also. Animals, they will it's tell you how. Constant. And once you understand or you learn, then you don't have to depend on them. And actually, we are uh, near to the Western Guards. Right. We have such a facilities a lot right, in, a, right, in right, our region. Right, right. Similarly, it will be available. In, in, in Tamil Nadu, there are so many NGOs uh, also. Uh, like I know some, some of them. Like Koimatur, there is a Koimatur uh, Nature Club. Uh, Eco Club is there. You are from Koimatur? I am from Koimatur. 
PhD College of Technology. Okay, great. Actually, one more thing. We have a club called Nature Club in our college. Okay. We organize such events okay, every okay. month, two okay. times. Okay, great, great, great. Yeah. Right, right, right. So they are conducting regularly that National Environmental Awareness Campaign every year. And then they are funding under uh, Ministry of Environment and Forest. Right. Every year they are conducting. Successfully they are conducting. I will show Almost. you the list of NGOs at the end of the presentation. Thank you. And you can locate the which NGO is there in your uh, area. And you can. Okay, I am just showing you a beautiful pictures of different ecosystems. Shola, you know Shola? This is a unique ecosystem. You can see some evergreen forest mixed with grassland, patches of grassland. This is a silent valley. It's not very clear. This is another evergreen forest picture. I think it was Priyankati. This is another very unique ecosystem which is found only in Western Ghats. Okay, Miristika swamps. It, it looks like wetlands or mangroves, but it is not wetland. It is uh, located in a very remote area in Western Ghats. This is uh, this is from Hong Kong, but it is a wetland, another river, corals. You know, how many of you have seen corals? Uh, there is a wonderful world under the water. Yeah, everyone must experience this at least once in a lifetime. Yeah, if you are afraid of scuba diving, at least do snorkeling. Hmm? <laughs> These are so many things, amazing things are there around us, but we are so busy in our day-to-day -day life and you know, running behind money. You, you please tell this to students, okay? Mainly what we do, after 10th or 12th, first parents also and students also, 10th you try to get like day and night study, 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 maximum 19, 9, that, Kamal got 99.1 something. Sometimes nowadays they are getting even 105 with that sport quota and all. 1% huh? told I got 110% marks. I was wondering how can anybody get 110% marks. Then after that 12, 12, 12, when you get good marks, you are not allowed to think. They say engineering or management. Okay. Many students in my daughter's college, they did not know there is another discipline called arts is existing. Okay, after that, you got highest marks, mechanical. Okay, I'm asking one, uh, my neighbor, uh, what are you going to do? Engineering, which engineering? That depends upon marks. But what is your choice? No choice. I, I said, you like civil? No, if I get good marks, then why should I go for civil? Means they are least bothered about what is their liking, what is their passion, what they actually want to do. Uh, and then run, uh, then you go for engineering, then it starts, what? CGPA, maximum CGPA. Then placement, I got placement, oh, oh yeah. Then I got job, I got bungalow, I got uh, married, and that's it, that is my life. And then I, again, I am running behind money. Day and night, I am doing overtime, I am teaching, and especially industry people, you know, to get more and more uh, promotions. Yeah, they are running, running, working for bo boss, placing because they have to climb corporate ladders. And in doing this entire thing, why we are earning money? <laughs> Not only that, fulfillment of top family can happen with a small salary. We want more and more and more. Okay, we need happiness, right? We need food, we need to live happily. But we are going behind money, 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 and we are forgetting to live our life happily. Even family. Huh? Even family. With, even with family. family members. Yeah, so I want to tell students that life is not only rat race and earning money, going behind money. There is something, money is required. Money, we cannot live without money, at least in the present system. But go beyond that and also try to enjoy life. Go and see these kind of wonders. This I don't know, this picture I have taken from internet, but you can go to Andamans Lakshadweep. I know it is little far, Andamans Lakshadweep. Here in Malwan, that uh, Maharashtra, also Ratnagiri Malwan, also they are doing scuba diving. You can first start with your nearby places, sir. You can go to Western Ghats, you can go to Silent Valley, you can go to Parambikulam. Yeah, this, this, yeah, definitely. Mangroves. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely, I can arrange. This is another typical ecosystem. <laughs> How many of you have visited mangroves? Okay, what is unique about them? 
they have got something called breathing roots. This is called biological adaptation because soil is marshy, oxygen content is very low, so roots are coming up to breathe. They also have some kind of prop roots because they have to constantly face wind and wave action. Okay? So, and uh, why they are important we will study later, how they absorb <coughs> 5 times more carbon dioxide than any other forest type and they protect us from flooding during tsunami and also they act as bio shield and they provide habitat to many, many, many birds and animals. Okay, why ecosystems are important? They provide Energy. oxygen, water, water food, medicines, shelter, purify air, purify air because by sequestering carbon, they purify water, they act as kidneys and lungs. Yeah, kidneys means wetlands, they purify water and lungs, forest is acting as lungs, even wetlands, they absorb lots of flood carbon control. dioxide. Flood control. Yeah, flood control. Existence of river. Yeah, we covered everything. Most important is stabilization of climatic conditions, decomposition of waste. We just now learned that nothing is waste in nature, everything is recycled. And if it does not happen, what is going to happen? Watershed, watershed protection, conserve soil and their fertility, yes, control soil erosion. Forest ecosystem provide, like they, these all what I told is indirect benefits we are getting from forest. And yesterday I also told them that when they, they were calculated globally, not only forest ecosystem, all the ecosystem, how much ecosystem services they provide per year, it was 70 trillion dollars per year, yeah. Yeah, which is a very, very high. Uh, but here you can see they provide shelter to 2 billion people, means they directly they are dependent on forest, like uh, tribals and villagers. Wetlands or rivers, in globally, they 45 percent of the animal protein is coming from fisheries. This picture is like already we discussed, so I am not discussing. One more very, very, very important thing is pollination. Food, fuel, timber, bamboo, genetic resources, many wild varieties of our present crops come from forest. Okay? They help us in maintaining that genetic diversity. We get medicinal plants, grass. Non-wood forest products, what is non-wood forest products? Honey, Edible. amla, sikakai, soap nut, firewood, yeah, firewood is not considered as non-wood forest product, but that is also, yeah, wax, yeah, many medicinal plants. In How many are from Kerala? Yeah, they also, lots of uh, kurundotti and that they use all this, this in dashamula, arishtam, huh? The, uh, desmodium, that what uh, movila and orilla. Orilla means one leaf, movila is that is desmodium. They, all this is extracted from the forest. In some areas, see, in all areas you cannot collect non wood forest products, but in some areas it is allowed. Tribal go and they collect all this non wood forest product and they sell in the market. So, many people's livelihood is dependent on forest. Already I told about aesthetic beauty. Pollination of plants, what is happening? If there are no bees, what is happening? You know bee population is, has drastically reduced. Yeah? There are many uh, crop and uh, livestock varieties are coming from wild. Recreation and tourism, this is from Andamans. Biogeographical regions, each region has got unique ecosystem and unique biodiversity. So you can take them to uh, you can give this for an assignment that each student you can take one biogeographical region and they can study that what kind of ecosystems are available in that and do presentation not only ecosystem biodiversity. So I already told that they provide livelihood to 2 billion people, they also provide home to 300 million wood and non wood forest, 80 percent of the population in developing countries is dependent on uh, non wood forest products. State of world's forest. There is 31 percent of the total area under forest, but as per WRI research, 30 percent global forest is already cleared, it is not there. 
and 20 percent has degraded means 50 percent is already gone. 12 to 15 million hectare we are losing each year means which is equivalent to 36 football fields per minute. South America and Africa there is a large largest net loss of forest. China there is a good news because of large scale of afforestation. You can see there are five countries but they all are rich countries Russia, Brazil, Canada, USA and China having good forest that is almost half of the total world's forest and some countries they do not have forest at all. Some countries 10 countries have less than 10 percent. I already told that forests sequester huge amount of carbon ok. Three ecosystems sequester huge amount of carbon any idea which are these three? One is forest, ocean and coral. So deforestation is responsible for almost 15 percent of the greenhouse gas emissions and this 87 percent of global deforestation is occurring only in 10 countries. Amazon rainforest you might have heard about this yeah it is a very rich diverse rainforest which contains 90 to 140 billion tons of carbon contains means it has already absorbed or stored. Even if small portion is released it is going to cause it will accelerate global warming. During the ha last half century the earth's largest rainforest has lost 17 percent of the forest. Okay, How for forest degradation started in India? Uh, I think yesterday uh, Partha sir also mentioned about this that these forests were belonging to Britishers but they wanted to manage it scientifically and they were doing it scientifically but and they were they started cutting uh, timber for building ships and many other activities ok railways railways. Uh, but they were managing it scientifically they started they were doing selection felling they were managing it scientifically that time they declared many uh, areas as protected forest and reserve forest ok. But at that time what they did they banned entry of communities inside ok. So, so what happened that community started thinking that these Britishers are against them and this forest also they um, started uh, like generating some kind of negative feeling about forest conservation. And when the Britishers left though we continued the same way uh, we were not that efficient like in a control uh, forest department and then they just uh, damaged the forest without thinking much and degradation was, was happening. But then forest department realized this and they thought that they can conserve forest only with the help of community only with the collaboration of community. And then uh, they started uh, some program called joint forest management in 1972 that was the first JFM was in Midnapur district from uh, of West Bengal anybody from West Bengal here? Oh great ok. In many areas you must might have heard about. Uh, village forest committees or VSS, Vana Saurakshan Samiti in Kerala, huh? yeah, yeah. And uh, village forest committee is English term. So they they form this and community. Many time, many places it is successful. Many times it is uh, not that successful. Uh, so this is a good approach to conserve forest, involving community because. Yes, we have to save animals, we have to save tiger and elephants, but we cannot completely eliminate communities from the forests. Why we cannot? Because they are staying there since time immemorial. Yeah, they are staying there, that is their house. We cannot just eliminate them from that. Okay, what is happening in India? I will just tell you briefly. Uh, last report 2011, they showed that uh, actually we are supposed to have 33 percent forest. Uh, as per the you know uh, uh, scientist and uh, what all they, they measured and they decided that India should have at least minimum 33 percent of forest as per the policy. But we have only 21 percent of the forest. During 2011 uh, from 9, 2009 to 11 uh, we had lost 367 square kilometers of forest ok. And major loss was in northeastern state actually north Northeast India is one of the biodiversity hotspots and it accounts for nearly one fourth of the forest cover of the country. There there was a huge uh, decline in the forest almost 549 square kilometer. So you, here this is not very clear but red is 
scrub, white is no forest and very dense, moderately dense and open forest. Dark green is very dense, it is not very clear. Okay, there was some growth in some states. Mangrove uh, also had uh, slightly increased. Reasons for uh, decline in the forest was agriculture, short uh, rotation crops and plantation, encroachment, shifting cultivation and encroachment degradation. But what happened in 2013, interestingly, forest department uh, is claiming that there is a increase in forest cover. Now 2011, they said there is a slight decrease in forest cover and reasons also were told. Now 2013, within two years, they said that there is an increase in forest cover. What is your opinion about this? But still there is a decrease in northeastern state. Uh, some states, there is a decrease, but total cover, there is a slight increase. Do you think there is an increase? So what can be the reason, like why forest department is telling that? Any idea? Green cover rays, they are climbing. Yeah, that, that uh, total uh, forestation also they are including. Plantations of uh, different plants and trees. This is uh, uh, you are uh, like you just thought like that. You have not read the news. Yeah, very good. See what is happening is actually there is a decrease in dense forest. Okay, there is a decrease in dense forest, but where there is a increase in green, green cover outside forest boundaries. Within See how trees. yeah how they are clever. All this uh, like you first cut forest. Okay, and then you do all eucalyptus, stick plantation, coffee plantation, and that satellite imagery it shows green. So there is an increase in forest, but outside the forest boundary, and forest department is happily telling that. Yeah, but they are taking that also. See, there is a decrease in dense forest. There, there, there are three types of forest: dense, moderately dense, open area, and outside the forest boundary. They call private forest or reserve forest. So that increase also they are taking into consideration. So actually, forest area is converted into plantation. Is it a good sign? Can plantation serve equal good uh, ecosystem services like forest? Mangrove cover has again decreased. Okay, so you all know what are the threats to forest. Mainly it is like activities like mining. Yesterday, uh, Dr. Partha told that most of the unfortunately mining areas are under forest. Then industries, building, roads, large dams agriculture, shifting cultivation, monoculture plantation. Now, Uti once upon a time there was a thick forest, but now you can see it everything entire it is converted into plantations. Biological invasion, uh, how many of you have seen this lantana plant? Lantana, yeah. See lantana, mycenia, especially in Kerala, these are the exotic plants which were introduced long back in 1860s for ornamental purpose, since they do not have natural enemy here, they are spreading uh, like uh, they are colonizing and they are spreading very fast and they do not have any natural enemy uh, and they are replacing na native vegetation and western ghats and northeast India if you s see that 20-30% of the forest is uh, covered by lantana and they are, they are also like thick uh, shrub. So, uh, animal movement also becomes difficult. Mostly all along the highways. Right. You can see on road side because only thing is they need open canopy. If there is a thick canopy in evergreen forest, lantana cannot grow very well. Maybe we can include parthenium in the urban areas. <laughs> yeah, parthenium is on the road side. Parthenium we could not see in forest. By the way, I got opportunity to work in all these ecosystems. My PhD I uh, did in Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve uh, in Silent Valley, Siruwani, Mudumalai, Upper Bhavani. I got opportunity to work in all these forest types for more than 10 years, like uh, scrub jungle in Anekati and uh, Siruwani, that moist deciduous forest, and Silent Valley evergreen forest, and uh, Upper Bhavani is Shola. But we could not observe lantana in high altitude forest, in evergreen and uh, upper Bhavani, that Shola, uh, lantana was not seen, very, very, only on little bit on roadside because lantana needs open canopy, in thick canopy it ca cannot come, it needs light. 
So wherever there is a disturbance, you can see human, lantana. Human interference, where? human interference, wherever there are colonies, uh, you can see lantana and uh, there is another weed called chromolina, Eupatorium. Communist pacha in Kerala they call. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Communist pacha they call. Because it grows uh, gregariously. Huh? English, na English name is Eupatorium, but now scientific name is chromolina. Chromolina odorata. Lantana camera is another. Uh, Chromolena and third one is Mycenia. Mycenia <coughs> is called as a Dhritarashtra Pacha because it hugs that tree like Dhritarashtra and kills. <laughs> so when it is not there in any other area but Kerala it has destroyed forest like anything. Forest department do not know how to control that. Uh, Senna you want to say? Senna? Yeah. Senna also looks very beautiful uh, yellow flower. They, they have brought it uh, as a you know nice garden plant. It appears <coughs> like lawn. Same point plant you are talking about? Yeah. That is also uh, now uh, becoming invasive. See all exotic plants may not be invasive. What is mean, meant by invasive? When they start growing very fast they start colonizing and they start replacing native flora. Otherwise, there are many that uh, rain trees there, many, many trees are there which are exotic, but they are not invasive, okay. Another thing is uh, fragmentation. Fragmentation is when two fo forest uh, patches are fragmented, but some uh, animals like uh, elephant, they need a wide home range for uh, for eating, for breeding, they need wide home range. So when you isolate them and when the, those corridors are destroyed, their population gets affected. So wildlife corridors are very important. What is wildlife corridor? The passage which joins two fragmented patches is called wildlife corridor. So you must be hearing lots of news that lots of hotels like in Nilgiris and all hotels are coming in wildlife corridor and how they are threatening animals. So already I told that we have to think about long term ecological gain and they cannot be sacrificed for short term economic gains. So I am going to show this video, please watch carefully. First of the half of the video shows about diverse amazing biodiversity in Shola forest, okay. Since I am not able to take you outside for nature trail, I thought I will bring forest inside through film, yeah. Then second part of the film shows what we have done to that forest and what are the conservation measures. If you show this film, believe me, in the class you don't have to open your mouth, it is self-explanatory. And this is uh, done by a very famous wildlife photographer called Shekhar Dattatri. So we already discussed what are the conservation strategies, protection by joint forest management, we cannot exclude communities. Okay, before that what are the, what are the key, key learnings from that short portion, yeah you can tell me. <coughs> Silent Valley was protected, yeah, destroyed. They showed Hello. that if you are not preserving this forest, it is like a suicidal attempt. Indian economic growth will uh, will be there if we sustain the these valuable forests. Right. Only. right. The and they say that it is a suicidal if you do not think of long term Hello. conservation just for a short term benefit. Right? Yeah. I would like to tell that uh, most of the countries like forest and other things, they mainly require tourism. Yeah. So if we are going to conserve the forest, yeah. who knows, tomorrow our country might be the uh, tourism country plus country which is having most of the natural resources. Right, yeah, right. Right. See, we always promote tourism. There is no point in keeping people away from the forest. As I told you, we all are very much a part of nature. Only we promote responsible tourism. You know, what is responsible tourism? When you are going inside the sanctuaries or national parks or any forest area, you are not supposed to disturb wildlife. Uh, tourism should not be like uh, young college students going with beer bottle yeah, nah. and feeding monkeys, you know, that kind of tourism 
we should not encourage. We have to have promote responsible tourism. Madam, ecotourism. Yeah, more than ecotourism, I tell responsible tourism. This is an advanced term. term. Okay. okay. Yeah, because ecotourism also, okay, ecologically we are going, but then we should understand what is our responsibility. Even forest department, uh, when they leave you inside, they give you, yeah, don't take anything from the forest and also don't leave anything inside the forest. Okay. Madam. Yeah. I got one key sentence from the video yeah, yeah. that conservation of uh, nature yeah. is charity to nature. We are not doing any charity to nature. What he says that. Not the, I th um, uh, learned that no, it no. is for uh, the our sake, not ah, for nature. Very, very good, In sir. The, with this sense, yeah, it is charity to nature. Because this is, we are not doing any charity to nature. We are not doing any favorism to nature or forest or animals or elephants or anybody. We are doing this for ourselves our sake because our existence is related to that yesterday i told you that story there is no point in sitting on the same branch and cutting the branch like shake chili so are we going to become shake chili no and we are going to spread this message to our students that we are to and madam can chili. we say that we should be nature's friend yeah. in the sense uh. that if we keep nature's nature natural then we are nature's friend right, right so right. let us all become yeah, nature's yeah, friend very nice Brilliant. Yeah. One more thing, madam. Yeah. Deforestation is a suicidal attempt. Yeah. Which I suppose. Huh. And uh, we have to protect the forest for present uh, generation, yeah. for ourselves and for the coming generation. Right, right, right. See, usually in my all lectures, I used to tell that please uh, save nature, save environment, because this is we have borrowed from ancestors and we have to give gift to our children. Okay, we have to preserve. I have changed that line. I say, save forests, save everything for your existence. The way like things are happening, the way islands are sinking, the floods and so many natural calamities. Actually, they are not natural calamities. They are man-made calamities because somewhere we are responsible for that. So, I have changed that line and I say that save nature for your existence. Your own existence and very nice sentence they have told in that video that we are not doing any favor or any, any charity to anybody by conserving nature. We are doing it for ourselves. Yeah. Most of the people here are civil engineers yeah. and uh, they have studied these things that is uh, related to dams and all. It is the development which is concerned to three to four decades maximum. But uh, what the film says that don't consider just the three to four decades, just consider your uh, one or two centuries right. for the development. Very good. Very good point, sir. I uh, just want to know that you must have interacted with a uh, couple of forest officials as well. Yeah. Uh, living academician like us. Yeah. But I understand that even though I, do, I don't have much knowledge about ecology, but I understand the importance of forest. Yeah. And everyone sitting here. Right. But uh, when you interacted with forest officials, huh. it might be interesting study huh. to see that after your interaction and this kind of nice, you know, knowledgeable movies, hmm. they see it. And then you visit them after, say, one year, and if you can find out any change, or then again they sit and again watch, and then give another six months, one year time, and see that if there is any change, if, because that... Forest officers you are telling? Yes. Because see, I want to tell you, sir, maybe forest officers are badnam, but I have seen some forest officers, they are genuinely concerned about this, this thing, True. and that first uh, video, she is alive. I have shown in that I because of uh, lack of time I did not show you that full video but if you see that how many forest officers have uh, even you know faced uh, lots of like life threatening things from poachers some some people have lost their lives that's true yeah actually it's more beyond the <coughs> officers level perhaps in the you know policy no, see levels. what i am telling you that uh, again yesterday also we discussed so much uh, it is not that people are not educated, it is not that people are not aware, but there is something called attitudinal issue where I am very selfish and I am least bothered about what is happening to others, I am least bothered about what is going to happen to environment and earth and my future generation, I am only worried about today's my well-being, how big car I am getting and what bribe I am getting and I told that we are running behind money because for us, more money is more happiness. Yes. That is a concept. 
So to change that attitude is going to take time. Now you people are asking me solutions, solutions, solutions. Okay, it is not going to change over one night or with this lecture or what. That is why are teaching our students or children because it is going to take time. It is going to take maybe one generation. We don't know. That is why we are generating awareness. So don't expect impact. Today film dikhaya, kal conserve ho gaya. Nahi hoga aise. It will take time. Okay, definitely I understand that efforts are not enough. We have to take long term efforts from all the directions. Not only from, we have to take, uh, first we have to start educating people. Then only we can build awareness among masses. Who are making policies? Government. Who is electing government? Public. Okay. So unless there is an awareness among public, unless all public says that we want to protect that environment. I told you Dahanu's story. I told you that even after getting favorable orders from Supreme Court, the highest court of this land, country, after getting orders for 17 years, orders after orders, orders after orders, they were not getting implemented. Because there was no political will, there was no public support. So when it happened, when public got aware, only when they got aware, only when they suffered the damage, money-wise, monetary terms. And then there was a pressure on everything and God. So our main intention, don't worry about immediate impact, but at least think that I'm going to contribute whichever way, in a small way, I'm going to generate some kind of awareness. And even if I'm from my 200 students, even 20, 30 students, if they become little bit environmental uh, conscious and they take some favorable actions in their future also, I have achieved something. Okay, so there are solutions. We have to work in different level, generating awareness among public, having favorable government policies, putting pressure for implementation, supporting all these NGOs who are working in environmental conservation field, having a balanced view because we have to have some kind of development. We can't become activists and say no, 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 agenda to everything because there can be some political agenda. So identifying right NGOs and supporting them, right cause. Yeah, I'm, I was planning to tell everything but since you have asked, now I'm telling. There are public hearings whenever some developmental project is coming in, in your area. But I am not bothered. I have to go to my lecture 7 o'clock, whatever. My students are waiting. After that, my children are coming. My husband is coming. I have to cook. Finished. I am not bothered what is happening around me. If something public hearing is coming, I don't even know what is public hearing. I don't know what is environmental impact assessment. So first thing is awareness, knowledge, education. Second thing is ethical or attitudinal change. Yeah, whatever I have, I am going to give to others, whether it is my students, my children, my neighbors. I am going to support people who are actually, who have devoted their life. I am not able to devote my life because I have got other responsibilities. I am going to find out good people who are already working in for the cause. I am supporting them whichever way I can. Yeah, I am going to elect politicians who have this pro-environment agenda. And I'm going to ensure that they follow that. Otherwise, at the time of election, they may say something and later. So you saw some films and yesterday we have seen so many examples like we can't become Medha Patkar, but definitely we can support this kind of activities. At least we can spread. spread the message, awareness. This is what we can do. And then there is some kind of solution. People told you did not tell me solution. There are solutions of something like you can go for green technology. You all are engineers, you know, I don't have to tell you a solution, you know how to conserve water. Nikhil and myself, we will be talking in our lectures also about water, energy, like how you can do water conservation. There are examples. It is not that solution is not there. Tarun Bharat Sangh, this Rajendra Singh, he has converted desert into paradise. He has shown that how you can do water conservation and convert a desert into paradise. People are going for renewable energy. There is one Dharnai village in uh, India itself who is self-dependent on solar energy. 
Arizona project in US, there are very, very inspiring examples. Though there are so many sad stories, there are so many inspiring examples that what can we do? People say, how can we do sustainable uh, farming? Whether it is organic farming is successful, whether it can feed population. Bhutan has shown that it is 100% organic. It has fed population. It is happily living. It is the most happy and green country. His, uh, Bhutan's prime minister is testing electric cars. Electric cars not based on fossil fuels. Electric car based on solar. So it is not that there are no solutions. There are solutions we have to find. First thing is, solution is our attitudinal change. And whatever solution you work and if you are not ethical, we have to become ethical and you have to ensure that other person is becoming ethical. Or you pressurize, you put pressure. For that you need favorable policies. For that you need government who is pro-environment. For that you need public awareness. For that you need education. For that you need green technology. For that you, as Nikhil told, we need systems approach, systems thinking. We cannot address one problem in isolation. We have to see in a holistic approach we have to have. Now we have to also take help of corporates. Usually we think that all corporates are bad, but it is not that true. We can generate, we can sensitize them because they are the major, you know, players. They are the major polluters. So you can, you can tell them that how they can start a green business. I was in Godrej, okay, and we had a sustainability cell where they were genuinely working on how they can reduce their carbon footprint how they can reduce their ecological footprint, how they can go use cleaner technologies. And now something is called sustainability reporting. Corporates are also ready to, they are also interested to show them as a green corporates, green companies, green image. All every, every time it may not be green eye wash or green wash. Sometimes they are genuinely doing, okay, sometimes some Cases may be fake cases, but I have seen many people, they are doing watershed management, they are going 100% renewable energy in many, co many corporates. Why I am telling corporates? We have to target whatever in the name of CSR or whatever they are doing is good for us. Instead of just blaming them, we have to convert them. We have to make them green businesses. So these are the solutions. As Nikhil told, industrial ecology, waste of one industry can be used as Another industries. So solution here is we cannot remove people from the forest. We have to take them into confidence. We have to take help and the best successful model which is proven is community forest management. Large scale plantation, sustainable harvesting. Already I discussed. Pro, there are so many laws. We have got beautiful laws but implementation is not happening. For that we have to have vigilance committees. You can't save country, at least save your neighborhood. Just keep watch what is happening at the, your neighborhood. If something is ha happening, uh, inform forest department, police department. Yeah. There are different ecosystem. You know from where this picture is taken? Vikroli. <laughs> yeah, I have written, okay. <laughs> So can you imagine such a beautiful forest is existing inside the middle of the city. So in Mumbai you have two uh, beautiful forests, one is Sanjay Gandhi National Park and this vast, though 40% of the mangroves have already destroyed. There are different ecosystems, I have spoken only about forest ecosystem and Shola. So why mangroves are important already I spoke, because only those plants can grow in that hostile environment where they have to constantly face wind and wave action, water logging and high salinity. For that they have got adaptations already we discussed. They occur usually in intertidal zone or creeks and shallow bays and alapi, you know, Kerala people, backwater, who West Bengal, Sundarban, yeah, yeah. So this is viviparous germination, their seeds germinate when it is attached to mother plant. Uh, they excess salt, they have got beautiful mechanism to throw out excess salt, you can see the salt. Huh? This is a term. Viviparous germination is, seed is germinating when it is attached to mother plant itself and it floats and when it gets suitable substratum, 
it uh, it starts germinating so such a wonderful mechanisms are available adaptations in nature so we were talking about mangroves why they are important how they protect us from tsunamis they act as bio shield there is an interesting example even during floods in mumbai wherever there were mangroves uh, like problem was less i won't say that they can completely solve problem but definitely they can hold water because when there is a concretization of land uh, there is very less soil is remaining where water can get absorbed right so that was the problem with mumbai flat nagapattinam and pichavaram these are the two adjacent districts during tsunami nagapattinam so faced a heavy loss and pichavaram very little impact why can you say yeah pichavaram there is a thick cover of mangroves and nagapattinam there is no mangrove so they are you can say that they are really saving our life their lifeline of most of the coastal cities they also are breeding and nursery ground for varieties of marine organisms fuel wood fodder and source for tourism and recreation coral reef this is another interesting ecosystem this is a joint venture between animal and plant they support each other coral is animal or plant animal and but plants live inside coral huh? called zooanthellae because of that only they get beautiful colors okay and they they are in the cup that cup is made up of calcium carbonate these are very sensitive ecosystem whenever there is pollution or increase in temperature they get bleached because algae in in that coral dies and they are very very sensitive especially to climate change they, they you can call them as a fragile ecosystem they also support varieties of animals beautiful fishes wetlands you know wetland this is a transition between land and terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem this is picture from chilika lake similar way already i had told that they help us to retain water table they act as sponge they act as kidneys and they purify water they absorb carbon dioxide especially mangroves this is a, already i have described this discussed this they also act as important feeding and breeding ground for number of migratory birds this picture is also taken from mumbai can you imagine they also support livelihood of fisher folk so what are the threats same in unplanned development agriculture siltation chemical fertilizers oil spills invasive species here in water invasive species are different ecornia have you heard of ecornia this is called as terror of bengal dumping mainly in mumbai and all you can see lots of dumping is happening in mangrove area we have already lost 50% of our wetlands 41% of the uh, birds population is declined you can see 60 72% of the fresh water turtle are threatened same thing again i want to repeat ultimately no development is sustainable without taking care of nature yeah i already told that report to forest officer respect everyone's right to live conservation yeah this picture is also from thana creek so same nature for sustainable future